And hello, everyone. We're like a couple of seconds early because it says 159 on my clock. But you know what? Better to be early than be late. Am I right? Wait, did you say something, Moon? Are you muted? Yeah, okay. <laughs> There we are. There we are. Because I was like, dude. That would explain. My audio is moving. My audio is moving. Like, I know that it's picking up the OBS call. uh, Or that OBS is picking up the Discord call. And I'm like, but I'm not hearing you at all. Are you muted? Like, what were you saying before, Moon? Did you have anything that can be said on stream? that that uh yeah like all i said was hello first and then uh (laughs) just responding to what you were saying just be like yeah 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 yeah." all right guys hi welcome to anime church we fuck up uh (laughs) this is gonna be a weekly occurrence just deal with it we have an extra large show there is so much content i couldn't even bother to make a freaking title pro- appropriate to it so i just i literally just called this episode it's too big i can't think of a title or something like that uh, it's said. not all right not with the quite such the sexual undertones but yeah um uh welcome to anime church we don't judge you for your cosplay you come come to our church dress up if you must we're doing it i mean we're we're cosplaying as churchgoers as Think decent like individuals no 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 don't 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 make that don't make that statement i can not, guarantee not church you goers. not church goers i'm cosplaying as a decent individual oh i i'm i'm cosplaying as a scientist which i'm definitely not uh yeah yeah <laughs> where's your costume this is my costume i'm a homicidal maniac they look just like everyone else <laughs> yeah. i thought you were equating church going to decent human being and i'm like i know that's not true all right. Uh, and uh, I know better. Actually, uh, fitting the theme, fitting the theme here. Moon is the only one amongst us who is actually dressed at, or cosplaying as a churchgoer, which is kind of funny. Eh. At least from the waist up that we know of. I mean, like, I'm also wearing the matching pants. All right, there you go. Ah, oh, man, I was really hoping it was pajamas. Same here. I'm actually no, no, wearing no. jeans this time. I have that for time. comfort under the pants. There you go. I normally, I normally <laughs> do this entire show in pajama bottoms. Today, I'm actually wearing jeans. There you go. Oh my! I know, right? I'm I got all fancy and shit. What, what is going on? By the way, for those of you that are new here, you dress up as a cultist. Thanks, Revan. Thanks. You know what? One of these days, one of these days, we're gonna dress up for democracy. Yeah, and liberty. We're gonna show up in hell diver outfits because fucking hell yeah. I'm gonna ha- one of these days. I'm gonna have a nice kettle over here with a bunch of cups of liberty. If the kettle's not named Hen yet, I will be disappointed in you. <laughs> this is this is a fa- because she has played hell diver. It is proof that Henya makes liberty. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. I'm cosplaying Akane from Camphor at OdaFest. Hell yeah, dude. Oh, all right. So there we go. Guys, nice. uh, welcome to Anime Church. I am Richie Roberts, your minister of science and technology. I am Moonlight Sparks, your minister of archaeology. Praise Arceus. Could be worse. You could and be am... worshiping a rock. And I am Fedoros Arun, your patron saint of Snackos. And apparently liquid death. No, no, yes. look, look, liquid yeast is not <laughs> a snack. No, no, it's, it's water. It's just water. Oh, it is? Yeah, it's it's actually water. just water? Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. liquid death is not alcoholic at all. It's oh, delicious. I thought, I thought you were drinking beer on the show, and I was like, look, that doesn't count as... <clears throat> By the way, beer does not count as a snack. No. But we do. But I do. We were in the same place. I was like, but we do. <laughs> yeah. We're a snack. Uh, we're definitely a snack. Uh, Eat us yank. up. <laughs> All right, anyway, um, num num. Guys, holy shit, we've got so much to cover. If you want to keep up with all the stories we're going to be talking about, I have made a handy dandy little section for each Notebook. part. We've got so many effing trailers dropped this week. And we've watched them. We're going to talk about them. 
there was also some big uh anime to do going on in i think japan or something and so a bunch of like announcements and trailer like so many summer and fall announcements just dropped and we have to talk about them in the world of anime there's also gaming news we now have a gundam block that's how much gundam news dropped so fenris gets that entire block uh <laughs> your 3d's reddit printers are ready printing out a hell diver helmet there you go nice all right uh guys once again uh since this is on youtube I'm going to go ahead and state this beforehand. Uh, we tomorrow will be doing uh, the raft episode of our slime stuff. No. Yeah. No. Okay. So I was wondering what the hell. And then I realized Monday is the first next Monday. Not this coming, not tomorrow, mm -hmm. but like a week from tomorrow is the first. Mm -hmm. So yes, this will be the final stream of the month so we're going to be playing raft tomorrow don't let that dissuade you same thing as always please clip our twitch channel stuff so i can send them to the appropriate people to upload them as youtube shorts we need to mo we need we like more promoting funny things are captured yeah there's a lot of stuff i don't know if you can clip a twitch stream that has already run its course if it's only live stuff that you can twitch are that you can clip on Twitch, but please, the more stuff you clip and the more you post the links and send them to us and share it with us, the more we can actually, the more I can download those and send them to the appropriate people. It's funny because I have to download them, then I have to upload them to Google Drive and then share it and share their Google Drive and be like, here's all the shit. And uh, then download like the what? files. And I was going to order again. Black Clover Season 2 DVD. All right, so here's the thing. Uh, you're missing out on a lot of good, fun stuff if you're not coming over and seeing us on Twitch. Not today, but next week we're going to be starting Volume 3 of the Manwa for Solo Leveling. So we're getting kind of close to catching up to the anime. I mean, by next week, we the anime will have ended, so we will eventually pass the anime. But uh, we mm. are reading and acting, or redacting, as we like to call it, uh, to solo leveling so if you want to come by and hear some fun and talented people actually perform solo leveling yeah that's what we're doing we're doing that on sunday evenings uh every other sunday so that having been said uh one last announcement i know it's months away but if you're down in the southeastern portion of the united states and you're capable of getting in and around the nashville area uh, we're going to be trying to attend a KaiCon this year. That's at the end of June over in Lebanon. Uh, just look up akaicon.com. Check that out. Uh, we are now sending out panels and probably going to do five or six of them. There's a lot. Uh, yes, we will be doing an anime church. So that week, there won't be a live show for anime church. We're going to do it live at the thing and uh now here's the thing we may actually if we can get it done we may record that particular performance of anime church at a con with a live audience yes yes um and we may upload it to the channel it's gonna be interesting because like it's the first time that like we're all gonna be together in a place if we can all pull this off that'll be great I think the three of us of are the most likely to be showing up. I am going to try and see if yeah. we can get Shem. It'd be great yeah. to have Shem. It'd be great to have Shem. I need to give yeah, that man Shem. a hug. Funny. I need to give Shem a hug. He has a great sense of humor. Just a great sense mm -hmm. of humor. But um, uh, oh, last, last but not least, before we dive into the news, I have a healthy tip for everybody. And I do mean healthy because it's good. Uh, if you're ever at the store and you get those little golden potatoes, those tiny little golden potatoes, here is your good breakfast tip. Grab a cheese grater. Just a cheese grater. And your potato. Rinse your potato. And then on the setting where you would make the large shredded cheese, use that side and grate your potato. Throw it in a skillet. Throw it in a hot skillet with a little hot oil. And start cooking it on about medium high heat. You got hash browns. Put some salt, sea salt on, preferably to kosher. But yeah, sea salt on the 
on the uncooked side, wait a few minutes, flip it, salt the other side, done. Your choice of condiment, preferably, uh, I go with uh, Chick-fil-A sauce, number one, because I have it and I need to use it. And secondly, holy shit, I did not realize how good it was. I also dabbed a little bit of honey on there today when it was nice with some uh, with some Southwest seasoning. It was uh, it was quite good. I very much appreciate it. But that's a quick and easy way to get yourself some hash browns. And if you get a big enough skillet, not a small one, but a big skillet, you can do your eggs and your sausage together with the hash browns and get it all done in one go. I'm telling you, it's really good. And it's uh, it's actually a much healthier uh, hash brown alternative than say going to a fast food chain and getting their little square or rounded rectangular the, the thing they deep fry rice. for several minutes and yeah these are these are oh, well better no. i will say this use a light oil don't use vegetable or canola something like avocado or olive oil something of that nature it's a it'll be easier healthier for you it's just plus dude all you need you don't really need all the other stuff that i said just just salt alone on on your fried hash browns there is more than good enough. I just I put a little extra on there because I like to be zazzy. This is Zazzles. He's zazzy. Ah, <laughs> uh, you had to start fasting for Ramadan. Ah, gotcha. No, that makes sense. Uh, keep yeah. up the good work. Yeah, man. I I don't have any. I was going to try and say something like graceful and honorable, but I realize I don't speak Farsi at all or know any other words in Arabic that are, I know Asalaam Aleika. What does that mean? Uh, I think it's like go with God. Uh, you sometimes cook uh, pierogies and pasta. It's an Austrian risk. But yeah, hey, nothing wrong with mm, that. Tasty. Yeah. That having been said, though, guys, uh, that is all the news that I'm going to cover for right now. Uh, tomorrow at 8 p.m. is when we're doing Raft, but normally it's uh, us reading the Slime Light novel until we get caught up on, until we get to the end of Volume 16. We're almost at the end of Volume 15, guys. That's that's how far we are. That's like Season 5 content, and I think Volume 16 is actually the beginning of Season 6. So we're that means we're going to have to buy uh, volume 16 for two weeks from now. Yeah, 16, 17, 18. Uh, that would most likely be vo uh, be season six of the anime. Guys, guys. Only a couple weeks. We're like, no, just a week and some change. It's April 4th is when it's coming out, if I remember correctly. Literally the Thursday after was, next. So was the 10th. No. April 4th for slime. April 5th. Mm. April 5th. Okay. Oh, so Friday. Next Friday. Not this coming Friday, but next Friday, season three of slime starts. We're, We're getting do watch slime season three and Mashoka. You goddamn right we are. Fuck yeah. Yeah, of course we, we are. Yeah. We're, we're definitely watching and reacting to slime. All right. That having been said. Let's go and get started because we got a lot to go through. It's almost uh, starting the news about when we. Uh... No, no, you don't have to stop. You're not bugging us. You're not bugging us. You're good. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and get started on the news. Let you know what's going on out there in the world of nerd. Now, keep in mind, if you want to read any of these topics, we have them posted in the description I've made a nice, neat little list with the tiny URL uh, links for a lot of the longer stuff. But, uh, yeah, there was a lot to talk about this week. A lot to talk about, and we broke it down. So, uh, first up, we're going to start with the general nerdy stuff. Uh, guys, did you at least take a look at the beginning of this first topic we're going to be talking about, the video that we're covering here? Mm-hmm. I don't always yeah. go to John Campia, but sometimes he does actually find, and he doesn't just get his stuff from the rumor mill. He typically hears it from the, the actual like articles of like deadline and other places like that. So, but this is coming directly from a source at Disney saying 
Avengers 5 plans have been revealed with a few more new details that would push um, variants would be stronger in uh, Avengers 5. So we're going to get a higher emphasis on variants, which means we might actually get to see John Krasinski's uh, Mr. Mr. Fantastic Mr. Fantastic just one more time. Yeah, that'd be great if we did. But it also pulls in a lot of stuff. And of course, we have my favorite Marvel movie upcoming, uh, Deadpool and Wolverine. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm so looking forward to that, dude. It's going to be so good. Uh, but yeah, they're saying that not Jonathan Majors this time, but their Kang will still be involved in this, just not as involved as would have been if it was still Kang Dynasty. Now, hmm. there are many variants of Kang. They don't all have to look like Jonathan Majors. It's kind of sad how Disney set themselves up for that with like the uh, mid credit sting in Ant Man and the Wasp: Quantumania, but. Uh, the sources say that we're still getting Kang, just not as strongly as we would have before. Uh, but yeah, m multiverse is going to be a thing when you're talking about secret wars, because we're pulling in stuff all over the place. Oh, also, there is a very strong, strong uh, Sony push to get the fourth Spider-Man movie out. And I don't mean the MCU. Tobey Maguire. So that was also Ooh. one of those things that was being talked about. Yeah. All right. Now let's move on to the trailers proper. Okay, we got uh, we got Star Wars Acolyte that just dropped. And, of course, the controversy abounds. They're like, oh, my God, Star Wars is doing another woke episode. I was like, dude, I didn't see a bunch of woke shit. All I saw was a bunch of martial arts shit. Uh, for those wondering where in the timeline this fits, this is 100 years before the Phantom Menace. So this is at the end of the High Republic era. And uh, yeah, this is when the light side ha is at its strongest. And now the darkness is slowly starting to rise. Everybody is making this assumption that this is like the beginning of Palpatine. And I'm like, Palpatine's not quite that old, guys. This we is damn well not... better see a young Yoda. Well, I I'm hoping we see a young Yoda. But more than that, I'm hoping that this means we get the uh, this means the early introductions of Darth Plague is the Wise. Yes. So, hold on. You said this was a hundred years before uh, Phantom Menace, uh, episode one. episode one, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, young Yoda would still at least be an adult. Well, yeah, he'd be seven hundred instead of eight or nine. Yeah. Oh no, no, he yeah. he'd be in his seven hundreds. Not exactly seven hundred, but he'd be in his seven hundreds. So yeah. Younger, <laughs> not in his not in his twilight years yet, but yeah, there. Hopefully, uh, in definitely. his prime. Well, it is the High Republic, so possibly. Uh there was a lot to like there. I did have a whooping moment because uh, toward the end, when you get that force blast that pushes everybody away, I'm like. <gasps> Because all I'm thinking about is the Force Unleashed. As soon as I see that, mm -hmm. I immediately... I'm like, one Love of the that. best oh. Star Wars things to ever happen was the Force Unleashed. But I also like Carrie on Moss as a Jedi because we get a lot of that Matrix martial arts in there, too. And uh, mm -hmm. one of the Jedi is also uh, the uh, from Squid Game. I never watched Squid Game, so they're like, this guy is really important to Squid Game. I'm like, cool, is he the main character? Are there multiple main characters? I never watched Squid Game. What's going on? What's I going just know on, it's guys? a show that kills people who yeah. play child games. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But that's it. Yeah. That's kind of that's kind of where we're at. Uh but you I guys mean, took a look at this what after. Does. <laughs> I mean, when you need to murder some younglings, don't call really? Anakin because he missed a few. I'm uh, just saying, I trusted him with my child. Hmm. Uh, so long as they're loyal to the empire you know uh, he's fine with them all right uh so now that we've given kind of a brief summary of what it's about guys i'm not going to give like a detailed summary of this trailer i thought it was a pretty damn good teaser 
thought it was a good teaser. And that's all it is. It's a teaser. And everybody's immediately jumping on the, it's woke, it's woke, it's woke, it's woke. It's like, calm down, guys. It's a teaser. We don't know jack shit about the story. Y'all need to, like, lighten the F up right now. We don't the know only, anything. The only thing they tell us in the trailer is somebody's killing Jedi. How is that woke? Literally, oh, because they showed so many females or something, I guess. Or, like... It's like, it. it's, you know what? It's been now canon it, for decades nowadays, that females can be Jedi. Here's the thing. Here's my thing, though. All right. Nowadays, I'm starting to think that the term woke is thrown around when, like, a white man is not on screen. Because that's kind of what it feels like. It's like, oh, no. Other people of color and women are predominant. Oh, it's so woke. And it's like, guys, guys, I'm not saying that there's not some kind of agenda being pushed that I'm not on board with, but like y'all need to calm the fuck down. Not everything you see is woke. And I'm not going to sit here and pretend like star Wars is just put out banger after banger after banger. But like, I feel like we're prejudging before anything has even happened. So many people were like, Ahsoka's woke. And I'm like, bruh, I watched Ahsoka it definitely was not trying to push like female empowerment or any of the other stuff that see. Uh, we'll get to that. But like, it wasn't pushing a lot of the narratives that everybody was like, Oh my God, it's this, it's that. It's like, no dude, it was, it was good. And now I understand Ahsoka probably wasn't the greatest. If you hadn't seen rebels, but if you watched rebels, you probably would have understood it a lot more and enjoyed it more. That being said, what do you guys think of the trailer? Uh, I'm pretty excited. Um, I I enjoyed seeing the yellow lightsabers. I played uh, Coach Four, both of them. <laughs> the, the, what was it? The Jedi Sentinels were the ones that had the yellow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And oh, again, guys. And again, guys. Here's the thing. Right. It's a teaser. It's a fucking teaser. All right. So it's it's gonna be short. Did you guys see the poster, the promotional yeah. visual visual the visual that they put up for this? It's literally a lightsaber hilt that's being dragged across the like the ground or something, and it's dragging blood behind it. Ooh. Yeah, that's why I'm like, okay, this visual in this trailer did or this teaser didn't necessarily completely line up. But if they're like going dark with the with the promotional content for the poster, they're definitely not showing us everything because they want they, like they want you to they want you to understand that um, there's some there's some visceral visceral darkness here, and let's be honest, Anakin can't be the only youngling killer in the Jedi's history. Oh no, no, no! Not in the galactic, not the galaxy's history. Now, gotcha. All right. Any last minute thoughts? I want to see more Jedi get cut in half. <laughs> I want to see. Here's my thing: we don't get enough martial arts love in the Star Wars universe. I no, was so no happy here. to see Carrie Ann Moss just throwing hands. Like literally, you gave us Trinity as a Jedi. I'm so here for that. Mm -hmm. So definitely looking forward. Will Mad Lax ever get a remake? I don't know. I don't even know what that is. Good question. Yeah. I've never heard of Mad Lax. Yeah. <clears throat> wow. So from so from one blood cover trailer to another. Yes. Yeah. And we, uh, okay. So I found out some interesting information and this comes directly from the director. This teaser for the new alien Romulus, the time it, where this movie now fits in the timeline takes, takes place between alien and aliens. Ooh. So this is in between the two Ripley movies. I mean, there is like a, 300 year gap so it makes perfect sense to fill yeah. that in so mm -hmm. that's supposedly where this one takes place 
And this is on a space station, so I'm already getting alien isolation vibes. Which, oh god, I know somebody's gonna make me play that very soon, so I'm gonna have to contact, uh... You know, Leafy and have her like hold my hand through that because damn it. Either alien isolation or we could just all get together and play aliens colonial marines, that trash fire of a game. No, I'm not I'm not doing that. I'm not I'm not buying or downloading or doing any of that. Nope, nope, nope. Okay. So this again was a teaser trailer. So it didn't give away a lot, but what it did show, holy shit. Definitely reminded me of the old movies, like the first two, like it had that claustrophobic kind of feel. And it seems like Disney has learned their lesson from Prey. Because this was originally supposed to come out streaming only. And they're like, nope, theatrical. And I'm like, dude, if you had made Prey theatrical, holy shit. Because that was the first really good Predator movie in a long time. Holy crap. Now, and just just the visuals in this trailer itself were just mind boggling. Like the the audio in this trailer and the callbacks to like the originals. Oh, it's so nice. Now, don't get me wrong. I was actually enjoying like the prequel stories with the engineers and everything and how because the next one was supposed to explain. The tie in of like the the next movie in that prequel trilogy was actually supposed to explain the Nostromos, like how they got how everything ended up getting to the Stromos. So it was going to, it was going to lead directly into the first alien, but yeah. So I'm still looking forward to that. And yeah, there we go. Uh, any other thoughts on this particular trailer? Cause damn, was it nice? I mean, they said a lot by not saying much. Uh, that's also true. Yeah. This was well done for a teaser, just in general. Mm -hmm. uh, never a good sight to see an army of facehuggers coming your way. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, no, that's terrifying. See, I hope they actually show what facehuggers can do aside from just grabbing onto people. See, this is the other thing, right? I am... That is the thing, like, out of all the things in Aliens, in the Alien franchise, the facehuggers are the scariest, most terrifying thing to me. Like, those <laughs> things... Mm -mm. No, thank you. Yeah. All right. Not only not only, only do they have the same acid blood, but they can use that to literally get to their target. Mm. They will melt whatever's in their way just to be able to clamp on. Jesus. Okay. And on to our next one. The aptly named Beetlejuice Beetlejuice. I love that they didn't mm. call this Beetlejuice 2, first and foremost. That that was just clever titling right there. Beetlejuice Beetlejuice. And if we ever get a third, we're summoning him. It's just how it is. I mean, mm -hmm. if at this However, point the they have to is... give us a third. Mm. The funny thing is, uh, with the name it does have, it's basically uh, Beetlejuice mm -hmm. Squared. Yeah, in a way. All right, so we got another teaser for the upcoming Beetlejuice movie coming in September, I believe. Uh, it's good to see Michael Keaton back. Like, this man is having a renaissance. He was the only good thing about the Flash movie. And, uh, and honestly, uh, I was super excited to see. I did not realize until recently that Beetlejuice came out one year before batman so michael keaton yeah. had yeah. beetlejuice in 88 and then in 89 he had batman it was great. really good year for him <laughs> well a couple years but still yeah he, oh, had, yeah he had a really good decade yeah he to did be honest. yeah he did uh but he is <laughs> back. still calling it calling it back we are back with Michael Keaton is Beetlejuice, and I just got to point something out for those of you who are too young in the 90s to remember this. The funniest reference, if it was indeed a reference, maybe it was accidental, but it definitely feels like a reference. Beetlejuice saying the juice is loose is referencing the O.J. Simpson. Is referencing O.J. Simpson when he was hightailing it on the freeway, uh, get, trying to get away from the cops. 
Literally, they said the juice is loose. I'm like, bro, that's so funny. <laughs> so if it is a reference, well done. Well done. But if not, uh, also, it's nice to hear the uh, the Deo song, even if it's sung by a children's choir. It was just really good to hear. And I love seeing Catherine O'Hara back. Uh, I forgot that she was Lydia Dietz's mom before she was Kevin McAllister's. <laughs> yeah. She well, was uh, she was in Beetlejuice before Home Alone. What's great about the first thing you hear is Deo, you know, a whole bit. If you listen to the actual like soundtrack version of well, just the soundtrack, the Beetlejuice theme, that's just how it starts. Deo, misa Deo. Before it does anything instrumental, that is the first thing you hear. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, if the we're other doing... thing, the other thing yeah. is uh, Tim Burton has confirmed that he's still using the same old stop motion techniques that he was using yes. in the first one. Yes. So they're doing all that. The only issue I have with that is please update. If you're doing stop motion, still please update the um, the sandworms. They need to be updated. They, they've bit, gone from but... looking... They, they, I, like, as I got older, I realized they don't look scary. They just look silly. And let's let's update them a little bit more so fair, that they look scary and less silly. How much of Tim Burton's stuff is, like, genuinely scary? Oh. Oh, you'd be surprised. There's plenty it, uh, of stuff I think that's scary. Sleepy Hollow. Oh, yeah. Sleepy Hollow was fucking good at that. Uh... To be fair, though, most of the stuff that I remember about Beetlejuice is from the cartoon back in the 90s. <laughs> I forgot they had a cartoon. Oh, yeah, dude. It's yep. showtime. But, uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward your to this. World. This has been a long time coming. Uh, guys, what are some of your thoughts? Uh, obviously, we have uh, New Blood in there with Jeanette Ortega. Mm-hmm. As the rebellious teenage daughter of uh, Lydia Dietz. Oh, and I'm pretty sure the funeral is for the father. Because mm -hmm. they definitely weren't bringing the actor back. Oh, God. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If, if, you, if you don't know, the actor was busted for CP. Like a long while back. And yeah, yeah that actor's not working anymore. Rightfully so. Yeah. Mm hmm So, yeah. Thoughts on this trailer? This I am trailer. excited. <laughs> it is so good excited. to see Michael Keaton in the whole suit and everything again. Alrighty. Well, we have one last... We have one last general trailer uh, to go over... Now, this is something that we've kind of talked about and heard was going to be happening. Uh, and w finally, we get a teaser trailer for it. And it dropped yesterday. So this is relatively new news. Uh, H or I guess they're not HBO Max anymore, just Max. But anyway, Warner Brothers dropped the uh, official teaser for the Penguin series. So Academy Award nominee Colin Farrell is back. And he is completely hidden away within the character of the Penguin. Like, you do not see Colin Farrell in that. Oh, you no. just see the oh, Penguin. No. It's so good. It was so, so well done. So that having been said, though, uh, I, again, you don't get a lot from this teaser. And that's kind of how it's meant to be. So for me, this is like, it looks really good. And I loved the Batman so for me, this is kind of a wait and see, but like, I have hope. I have like a lot of hope in this. And this is also something being done by Matt Reeves. So it's the same, same director that did the Batman movie. So yeah, it got hope. It really reminds me of like uh early 2000s, dark mafia shows. Mm -hmm. I am so looking forward to this and I'm not a fan of superheroes. So it's like, Which, so, I mean, so, that really works for, for. Mm -hmm. For the penguin, the penguin, yes. For penguin, yeah. So kind of like two, uh, kind of like Sopranos, but for Gotham City. So mm -hmm. Sopranos, but darker. Sopranos, but darker, and uh, Sopranos with actual crime. Uh, yes. <laughs> all right. 
We have finally moved out of trailer territory. Uh, that, who wants to take... Oh, okay. Sorry. Never mind. I guess Fenris, you'll take this one since Moon has to pee. Why didn't you go before we left? I did, but then I just kept drinking water. <laughs> All right. Uh, Goddamn. Uh, Dennis World Record certifies Animate Ikebukuro as largest anime store. The Guinness World Record is quite possibly the preeminent organization to catalog achievements big and small, also owned by the Guinness Lager Company. These include what some would consider serious records, such as sports records at the Olympics, to the seller record, or sillier records like tallest house of cards, and people around the world are looking for new and interesting ways to break or create new Guinness World Records. One such business in Japan's own Animate Limited with their challenge to the largest anime shop slash store with their Ikebukuro location. The challenge announcement for Animate Ikebukuro main store, Guinness World Records, trademark, will be delivered. We will invite guests Shota Aoi and MC Neki Matsuzawa to announce the Guinness World Record results. Come watch on 317 from 1500 Japan time on the Animate Times official YouTube channel. Announced on February 28th on the Animate Ikebukuro Twitter, the store had applied to the Guinness World Record as the largest anime shop store, and an adjudicator delivered the World Record's decision on March 17th. In conjunction with the adjudicator's delivery, Animate Ikebukuro held a ceremonial event at the Animate Ikebukuro... God, how many times do I have to say that goddamn word? Animate Ikebukuro... Theater. But still, that's like the seventh time in the last, like, minute I've had to say it. Uh, the ceremony featured voice actor Shota Aoi, announcer Neki Matsuz Matsuzawa, the Animate Limited C CEO Jun Fujiki, Animate Ikebukuro manager Tomoyuki Noichi, and a Guinness World Record adjudicator. <laughs> The ceremony also lands just in time for Anime Ikebukuro's one-year anniversary of its renewal opening. This makes the Guinness World Record the crowning, the crowning achievement not just of the brand, but for the anniversary year. Thankfully, this ceremony was streamed on the official Anime Times YouTube channel. God, if I didn't know how to say that, say Ikebukuro before, I certainly do now. Welcome back, Moon. Hi. I kicked my computer. I didn't oh. want to kick my computer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> my foot hurts. <laughs> oh, that's why people are saying thank you. It's been one year since the final episode of uh, Ash and Pikachu's journey in Pokemon ended. <laughs> that, that makes sense. <laughs> Mm. it's funny because they're like ash and pikachu i was like ash is north america he's satoshi in japan sorry about that but yeah guinness world record holder animate in ikebukuro i said it so you don't have to thank you i'm like the thank nostalgia you. critic of hard to say japanese words the store was oh, anime, anime what now? Animates <laughs> Ikebukuro uh, just got oh, the <laughs> Guinness World Record for the largest anime shop. Mm -hmm. Which it truly mm -hmm. is. All right. So, Moon, I know you watched this video, so I'm going to have you talk a little bit about this uh, Japan news. We've got a bit of Japan news that we're going to end on uh, before moving on to our gaming block of the news. So let's talk about mm -hmm. this real quick. We'll probably have a lot to say on this particular topic. Yeah. So basically, in Japan, specifically in Kyoto, uh, I don't remember if it's the entire region of Kyoto or just, a, just specific a, it's a specific part. It's a specific part. I think it's the entertainment <laughs> okay. districts. Uh, yeah. Well, one specific part of the entertainment district. Uh, um, also saying the yeah. entertainment district makes it sound sketchy. It's not... It's not. Shut it's up. Not. You're right. Um, 
Um, but anyways, uh, they are banning tourists from going into the entertainment district. In uh, from the Geisha district. Yes. Oh, okay. From the Geisha district. My bad. Damn it. Where people can dress up in kimonos and walk around as geisha and mm -hmm. things like that. Tourists are now banned in that area. Now, if this sounds weird and uh, if it sounds like discriminatory, wait till you find out what tourists were doing to incur this ban because it didn't come out of nowhere. This is some Definitely messed up not. stuff and I can abs I'm absolutely siding with the Japanese on this one. I am too, Same. as much as I wanted to visit the district. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When uh, geishas are walking around, they're wearing a very nice kimono and everything. And, you know, they've got their hair all done up and stuff. And basically, <sighs> don't touch them! Well, not don't only that, pictures. there Dress are literally nice. signs up saying, hey, don't just randomly snap pictures. Because people are just doing that. too. That. You're not supposed to do... Dude, it's just polite ask. etiquette. Always here, ask. It's like people don't even have basic manners here in the in the in the U.S. If you want to take a picture with someone, you just ask. You don't go up and just take their fucking picture. It's called having some proper respect. Don't some show your ass. Goddamn decency. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And even worse, people would come up. They'd like you know, touch the the kimono and everything. Uh, there were some people who were also apparently pulling on their hair. I Touching don't know if it was like, you know, but hard like, that's pull or anything, okay. but just none of that is okay. Like, also, yeah, like, I understand the, the it Japanese nice. culture yeah, is, wanna... the Japanese sure. culture is also one of uh, importance on personal space. Mm -hmm. So you don't just walk up and touch people. Handshakes yeah, yeah. are not a thing typically over there. Hugs aren't typically a thing. That's why in anime, if you see two characters holding hands, it's a big effing deal. Even though to us, it's like, what are you talking about? Hand holding. Bro, I've, hold my, I've held my bro's hand. What is that? What is hand holding? Oh, my God. Who's holding his own about, hand right now? And then talking about indirect kisses. I was like, shit, the amount of people I have had indirect kisses with because we drank from the same bottle. Oh, man. Jeez. The only time I'm going to worry about that is if somebody shoved it up their butt beforehand. I'm not putting my mouth on that. Uh, every now and then, me and my friends, whenever we try drinks, we go out, you know, have some drinks. We'll have, someone will get, like, an interesting one, and we're like, ooh, can I try that? Uh, we call that one the Corona glass because it just gets passed around. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, guys, I'll eat pineapple on pizza, but I won't taste someone else's ass that I'm not interested in. Just throwing out my sense of humor. Sorry about that. Uh, but it's not yeah. just that either. There's also, uh, there's a lot more, a lot worse stuff. Apparently bamboo trees have had to be cut down in the famous bamboo forest because people were carving mm -hmm. like their names into it and shit. It's like, dude, don't do that. Not just people... bamboo trees. People were literally carving their names into 1200 year old shrines. And other historical yep. landmarks. Now, here's a fun fact, uh, especially about the shrine. Uh, that's a 300,000 yen fine. That's $3,000 or $30,000. Yeah, 2000 3000 $3, Around 3000 but yeah. Okay. In the two to 3000 range. Yeah. And then there was another kind of or shrine. Or five years of jail time. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was also another kind of shrine where uh, it's like one of those wooden gates that they have set up, those yep. big red things. Yeah, those things are Story made out of gates. wood. They'll get cracks due to age. People were apparently thinking, if I put money in this crack right here, it's going to give me good fortune. No, it's going to make the cracks worse and make it harder to repair. So they had to repair it, and then they moved it down to Okinawa so it would be the fuck away from all of you. Mm -hmm. Jesus. Yep. Like, I understand the whole thought of, like, throwing a penny into a fountain and, you know, making a wish. This ain't a fucking fountain. This is a structure. Guys, guys, I'm just going to say this. Stupid people need to stop ruining things for the rest of us. 
now I'm not going to be able to. I mean, I, was, I didn't really have plans to go down there, but knowing that I just can't, like, it's not a thing I can do. There's already a limited amount of st- of places that foreigners are allowed to go and eat. And now you're going to limit things even further for us. It may come to the point. Here's here's the thing, guys. Tourism's a big, big deal over in Japan. All right? Back in the day, like like a couple decades ago, it was only like one to two million people coming in for tourism. Now it's 33 million that they're making. It's crazy. Please don't go over there and make things worse for everyone else. Please don't. All right, that's that's the that's the majority of everything for that, I believe, right? <laughs> did did we cover that completely or do you guys have anything more you'd like uh, to say? I think we did. Although for anyone who knows abroad in Japan, there's one thing I 100% agree with uh you know, for every time any one of us, you know, fucks up one of their things, we should let Natsuki write something on Something else in the origin or uh, yeah. in the fuck country yeah. of whoever did it. I love fuck the yeah. I love the idea. I don't care if that right, means we have to see Stonehenge. a graffiti dick on the Statue of Liberty. That's fucking fair. Please. And put also, it on I'm not surprised face. that hasn't already happened from someone in our own country. Please put it on her face. Put a dick on her face. It'd be hilarious. It would be so funny. Anyway, I'd love to see him write "Go fuck yourself" on Stonehenge. That'd be great. Mm-hmm. Oh. Also, Chris Chris Broad isn't real. It's just a robot that Iron Mouse lives in. I knew it. <laughs> anyway, uh, our next block is gaming. So now we're gonna dive into the world of gaming a little bit. We got a couple of topics to talk about. Guys, Apex Legends is just going through a tough bit of time right now. They had a tournament going on here in North America, and while it was live, Apex got hacked. Uh, you could see it live as they were playing. They were like, bro, bro, shit's happening. Shit's happening. I'm not doing this. Like, there was, there were cheats going on and suddenly being added to everybody participating in the tournament. To try and get all of the tournament goers banned or something like that. That's the hack that happened. Hmm. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so let's actually jump into it properly. I was watching like footage of this and I was like, holy shit. So easy anti-cheat washes its hands of the Apex Legend hacking disaster that saw streaming accounts hijacked live. <laughs> Their claim is that there's no RCE vulnerability within EAC. That's not been 100% proven. That's just that's just corporate speak for we're covering our ass. All right. Mm-hmm. The day after the North American finals, finals of the Apex Legends Global Series was postponed because of a mid-match hack against two players, Easy Anti-Cheat has, assured, uh, has issued a statement saying there is no RCE vulnerability in its software that it was exploited to carry out the hack. The first hack against Noyan uh, Ginberton uh, Oskose of Dark Zero took place during the third match of the day. He was suddenly able to see every other player in the map, even though walls, uh, even through walls, and was ultimately forced to drop out of the match. Although his teammates managed to claim second place, even though they were a man down. The second hack occurred in the next match. Philip Imperial Hal Dozen of TSM suddenly found himself saddled with an aimbot. That match was ultimately abandoned and North American finals were postponed due to the competitive integrity of this series being compromised. Shortly after the anti-cheat police department, a volunteer group that specializes in gathering intelligence on cheats to detect and disrupt cheating vendors issued a statement saying that an RCE remote code execution was being abused in the game and that it was unclear whether it comes from the game or the actual anti-cheat software. Remote code execution exploits enable attackers to run software on remote machines and they are bad news 
an RCE was represent uh, was responsible for the suspension of the PC PVP servers for Dark Souls games in 2022. A similar vulnerability was discovered in GTA Online in 2023. In this case, as Anti Cheat PD put it, the RCE is being abused to inject cheats into the streamers' machines, which means they have the capabilities to do whatever like installing ransomware software, locking up your entire PC, or just straight out doxing you if they grab your IP address. This is some serious shit. <clears throat> How this attack happened still isn't known, but earlier to uh, earlier the day this was posted, Easy Anti-Cheat issued a statement disavowing responsibility. Of course they did. Of course they did. Can't have their shareholders getting hurt. I'm pissy. Uh, we have investigated recent reports of a potential RCE issue within Easy Anti Cheat. Here's the thing, guys: if your company is investigating their own software, don't trust that. You need an, you need a third party investigation from a source that is not in any way, shape, or vol or shape or form involved in any sort of bias. You need a neutral third party to come in and do the actual check. I'm not going to trust a corporation where they're like, we looked at our stuff internally and found that there was no problem. Yeah. Yeah, of course you did. You're like, there's no problem as the house is on fire. This is fine. This is fine. That's mm. that's what's happening. We have looked into this house on fire and have that's concluded the house is not on fire. Okay, just then a little, what's that it's fire just a little smoky. It's just a little smoky. That's all. Anyway, we're going to incorporate anti-smoking policies, <laughs> anti-smoking policies in this not burning house. All right. That having been said, guys, thoughts, opinions um, on this whole situation, because it is it is yeah. quite literally fucked. Epic themselves uh, also confirmed this statement in a separate tweet stating we have investigated recent reports of a potential RCE issue in Apex Legends, which we have confirmed to be unrelated to easy anti-cheat. We are confident there is no RCE vulnerability with an EAC being exploited, even though they acquired easy anti-cheat in 2018. Yeah, literally, EA definitely mm. would be on the hook. Leave it to EAC EA to give be. us. Leave it to EA to give us over at uh, Fat Dog some more gaming it's news. Epic of a bad who owns them? Oh, it's Epic who owns EAC. Oh. I, I was hearing um, EA, and I was like, yeah, oh. Yeah, EAC. Um, Epic owns the easy, easy anti-cheats. Easy anti yeah. yeah. They acquired them back in 2018. Damn it, I almost got an EA joke out of this. Motherfucker. Almost. I wasn't going to give it to you You know what? Easily. No, fuck it. It's all EA's fault, and we all know it. Problem is, is I, I play Smite sometimes, and they use EAC as well. And I'm uh, dude, a yeah. lot of place, a lot of games use EAC. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of games suddenly looking around like, mm -hmm. should we be using this? You know. <clears throat> uh, yeah, but cheaters, man, they get around this software get around this software really really quickly and by the time they discovered something by the time they patch the next thing that cheaters are using they found another way in so it's just also they're saying that they used if if memory serves right this was using a kernel to get in so um, chicken no uh kernels are a type of uh like data stored on a pc i'm making a joke oh um, Okay, calm down there, sir. Little Sanders man. Uh, it's finger licking good. <sighs> don't make jokes, don't make jokes, don't make jokes, don't make jokes. Okay, cool. So now <laughs> telling that, that, me or yourself? <laughs> telling me. Telling me. I had I immediately had five responses to that and none of them were okay for stream. So <laughs> so anyway, that having been said, we're gonna move on to some happier news. Uh sort of. 
there's a, there's a tinge of sadness because we're still dealing with the uh, aftermath of Akira Toriyama passing. Uh, Jump Assemble released a new trailer, and this one does not look like a horrified amalgamation of claymation and CG. This one looks like the proper cell shading that we all know and love from anime video games. So this is another one of those battle uh, battle games, these fight games, but this time with Shonen Jump characters. Uh, let's see. There's there's an even bigger roster of characters. Oh, it's a MOBA. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's a MOBA. Yeah, basically. And I'm, uh, I'm th- okay there's an even that. bigger <laughs> roster of characters. It's literally Shonen Jump meets League, League of, of Legends. Legends. That's exactly what mm-hmm. it is. 100% I, I would have been so much happier if it was Shonen Jump meets, you know, Smash Brothers or something like that. Yeah. Because... That would make so much sense, or even uh, more of something like Mortal Kombat. Like, that's what that's what jump that's what the uh, last jump game was. It was that it just looked kind of silly. Mm. But yeah, and there's multiple variations of the characters that you can unlock. So Naruto, Luffy, Goku, like you've got and then you've you got, got those you've got bleach in there too i think hunter hunter was representative jujutsu kaisen uh there's a lot there there's a lot of there there so shonen jump is trying to make a moba and we'll see how successful that will be considering it feels like they just straight up took league of legends and just made it anime it's i mean lot. pokemon united that too <laughs> Good lord. All right. What do we think about this? I have no dog in this fight because I don't care one smidge about MOBA games or League of Legends in general. I mean, it I'm right looks... there with you. I've played League of Legends and Smite is a MOBA, just a different kind of MOBA with, in my opinion, a much better fan base. Um, it looks okay, I guess. Mm-hmm. Eh, it's the best I got. The animations are cool. Voice acting looks ni- or sounds nice. It's because it, uh, I th- honestly think that they good. grabbed clips of voice clips from the shows. I wouldn't doubt it. Yeah. Probably. Uh, Although I will say I, it was pretty funny when I first watched it because he says Kaioken and I was sitting there like, did he just fucking say Hayduken? <laughs> Kaio what? Alright, uh, if you want to know more about this, the trailer and a lot of the character demos are up on, or down in the description. So if you want to check those out, you can. Uh, on to more actual Akira Toriyama stuff. Sandland game previews a playable demo in the trailer. So yeah, there is a playable demo that should be coming out very, very soon, if not out already. Bandai Namco America announced on Monday in a new trailer that a playable demo is now available for the upcoming roleplay action game based on late Akira Toriyama's Sandland page. (sighs) Sandland manga. Sorry, I saw the late part and got bummed out. Players who play the demo will receive 30 B-grade steel and 30 B-grade bolts to enhance vehicles in the final game. Oh, I'm downloading the demo. <laughs> the game will launch on okay. April 26th or April 25th in Japan for PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X and S, and PC via Steam. So, yes, this is going on my wish list. Bandai Namco Entertainment describes the game, Dive into the desert, where both humans and demons suffer from an extreme water shortage. Play as and watch the uh, and watch the fiend prince Beelzebub, Sheriff Rao, and demon thief set off on an adventure in search of a legendary spring hidden in the desert. Introducing himself as a super evil fiend, Beelzebub has a pure heart like a little boy, but has superhuman strength and telepathic abilities. Rao, a small town sheriff, seeks the aid of demons to save all of Sandland from the water shortage. Thief, a wise old demon with thieving abilities, also accompanies Beelzebub and Rao on their adventure. 
I'm not going to continue reading the rest. I just thought I'd share that. And uh, the next article is literally talking about vehicles in this game because that's the second thing Akira Toriyama is really, really well known for is, uh, yeah, it, it, one of the other things that it's known for is definitely the, uh, the vehicles like Akira Toriyama likes to draw some badass looking cars. So yeah, Bandai Namco Entertainment began streaming on Thursday a gameplay trailer for the upcoming role-playing action game based on the late Akira Toriyama Sandland manga. The video highlights the custom car. Uh, and the rest of it is stuff that we've already talked about. It's just a copy pasta of the previous story. But yeah, you could... You can watch both trailers down in the link down in the description. Make sure to go check that out. Uh, again, Kira Toriyama's car and vehicle, like, drawings, you could tell that man loved cars. <laughs> mm-hmm. From his designs and everything. It's pretty awesome. Oh, uh, last minute breaking news. Just want to go ahead and put that out there since it did actually get uh, told, but at least a semi date has been put out. Uh, the Apothecary Diaries has officially announced that its second season is in production. It did this at the end of the final episode, and now we have that it is coming out next year. So that's a quick turnaround. Ooh. Yeah. So season two of Apothecary Diaries 2025 is what we're looking at right here. So I just thought I'd throw that out. We're not going to read the article or anything. I just saw it and I was like, that's pretty cool because as a fan of that show and if you haven't watched it bro bro be be a fan of this series because it's very very good um that's that's all i'm gonna say about that we've got two more pieces of gaming news and holy shit i want to hear your opinion especially on the second video here uh for the marvel 1943 rise of hydra game uh, but more importantly, the tech demo that they released showing uh, Unreal Engine 5.4's tech demo. I definitely want to get your thoughts on this, Benris, because we were a lot we were watching, and we realized that the entire trailer was actually happening in real time in game. Like that's that's the whole oh. shit. Yeah, this shit was insane. <sighs> This is the second trailer that I've watched in probably the last four months that was made entirely in Unreal. Yeah. And we're covering the other one today, too. Yeah. And the other one, the first trailer dropped a couple months ago. So, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, fuck. This was so good how they were talking about like texture detail for the ground, how they could add snow of different, like, heavy heaviness like that had just accumulated on stuff uh the lighting stuff like oh my god it was so good so yeah i, I as i was watching this i was sitting there thinking i wonder what fenris thinks of this because to me i'm just i'm just a nobody like i haven't even stepped a pinky toe into this world you've actually played in unreal i built in stuff it. in unreal yeah uh for those that don't know, I did apply to several gaming companies to be a level designer. Uh, I There was three weeks straight where I literally got like two hours of sleep each night because it was day job and then building this fucking level as a demonstration for what I can do. <laughs> Never got the jobs, but oh well. I know how much work goes into stuff like this. Holy fuck, it's beautiful. But... It would take, it had had to have taken the team that did this months to get this right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Holy crap, though. I love when they go into detail of the level design. And literally, they show the, they show an extended version of the bridge scene from the trailer without Black Panther in the mask. And this is apparently, uh, T'Challa's grandfather. This is not T'Challa. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of people confused on those. Like, nope, this is not T'Challa. This is not T'Chanka. This is uh, their grandfather. This is a this is a new one for MCU fans. 
to put it lightly. And I'm very much looking forward to this. This looks interesting. It does. Uh, I like how they mentioned that there were two super soldiers loose in uh, Paris, and Cap was like, no, there's three. That's two too many. Yeah. Wonder who the third one is. Or could it be Red Skull? He, he's the, uh, he's, he considers himself the third one. Yeah. That's why I said there's two too many. Well, we knew about Cap and technically Black Panther. But is the third one Red Skull? That's the... Su- well, technically, Black Panther's not a super soldier. They don't know that. Yeah. With, uh, with yeah. his abilities, they, they would consider him one. Him, yeah. <laughs> All righty. Well... Moon, did you have a chance to check out the tech demo? Yes, I did. Okay, what are your thoughts on it? It's just kind of outrageous what Unreal can do, for one. Yeah. Um, Because, like, we are getting to a point where it's, like, it's really hard to tell what is and isn't CG. Uh, the Winter Soldier oh, is not nice. a super soldier, no. And even at that time frame, he wasn't there because Bucky was still with Cap. Bucky was still with Cap yeah. at this time. He hadn't been captured by Hydra. This is the beginnings of Hydra. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Um, I mean, that was basically it. Because oh, I okay. said that uh, it's just hard to tell between CG and what's not. And... Um, it's- it's just, all it fucking, looks incredible yeah. yeah computer generated yeah all righty well that takes care of the gaming block now it's on to anime mm. news and more specifically trailers and teasers and like announcements in the anime world all right oh my. So the, this right trailers and teasers and tigers oh my uh mm. So this first one, I just clicked on it because I was like, oh, this seems like an interesting title. What's this about? And then I watched the trailer and I was like, holy shit, this is pretty cool. Uh, the trailer for My Wife Has No Emotion anime unveils a, unveils a teaser video. Uh, to give you a little background, Wright Film unveiled a new teaser and promotional video for the anime of Jiro Sugira. Uh, My Wife Has No Emotion manga on Tuesday. The anime staff announced that the TMS slash slash Sega booth at this weekend's Anime Japan, which, yes, that was what was going on. Anime Japan happened. Will feature a Mina avatar that can interact with attendees via live 2D graphics technology. The booth will also display the first figure of Mina in addition to talk events with the cast at Nikatsu and Tokyo MX booths. Followers of the anime's Twitter account can receive a clear file folder and sticker at participating booths. (laughs) Anyway, the anime will premiere in July on Tokyo MX. Uh, Okay, they're, they're, they're listing a bunch of the staff. Okay, here's the description. Takuma is a single guy who does nothing but go to work and come home. Too tired to do chores, he decides to get a robot to cook and house and keep house. Mina-chan is such a good housekeeper, Takuma jokes that she should become his wife. Mina takes Takuma's joke seriously, and slowly the two start doing more things together, like having a picnic outside. As time goes by, Takuma starts to fall for Mina, but can a human and a robot ever have an equal loving relationship? I'm not going to lie, dude. This kind of like when I watched the teaser for this, it, it felt so fucking wholesome. I was like, <gasps> a robot story me, that just uh, feels wholesome. Reminded me of plastic memories. Hmm. Chobits. For me, it makes me think of Chobits. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Which by the way, that anime had a fire opening. Oh, do, 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 yeah. Yeah. Let me uh-huh. be with you. I can't, I can't say the version that I joked around about and, and made a parody because, you know, I don't want to get us in trouble with YouTube. But yeah. I, I, I can assume <laughs> it starts and sounds like the letter P. 
on you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's good enough for a former president. It's good enough for that show. Anyway, mm. uh, the next anime that got a teaser up, uh, at first I was just kind of like, okay, this title seems interesting. And then I read the synopsis and I was like, all right, you got me. I'm sold. Uh, I want to see you this. Before you continue, Richie. Yeah, go for it. You can actually read the first chapter on Bookwalker because it's free. Hey, Bookwalker. That's awesome. Sponsor us. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next up, Sentence to Be a Hero anime confirms TV format in teaser video. Kadokawa revealed on Friday that the anime of Rocket Shokai's Sentence to Be a Hero, the prison records of a penal hero unit 9004 light novel series will air on television. The company also revealed a teaser promo video and teaser visual for the anime. Studio Kai is producing the anime. Uh, Shoka launched the light novel series in Katakawa's Kakuyumu site in October 2020, and Katakawa began publishing the series in print in September 2021 with illustrations by Mephisto. I'm assuming this is not the same Mephisto? Mephisto was the name of the song. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Katakawa released the sixth volume on April 17th. Yen Press is releasing the novel series in English, and it describes the story as heroism, a punishment for only the worst criminals. So already you have my attention. Those sentenced to the fate of a hero are forced to fight at the front lines against the Demon King's army. And if they die, they can expect to be revived and continue the battle. Holy shit. What an interesting concept. But when their leader, convicted of killing a goddess, meets another goddess himself, the contract they forge may be enough to change the world. Bro, this sounds so interesting. I'm so here for it. I have not watched the trailer for it yet. I'm going to I'm gonna oh, have the that. Mu music in the trailer is... It's instrumental music, but it sounds so fucking good does it all right mm -hmm. I'm, I'm gonna check that trailer out just reading the synopsis had me so i'm just like bro if you got me with the synopsis i'm, I'm here for it Man! you're next present you got the next one <clears throat> Yay. and then we get and once we get done with the trailers we will uh we will talk about solo leveling Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Once again, this is a show you've watched, <sighs> so that's why I'm like, Moon can do this story. Yeah, no, that's fair. Yeah. Mashoku Tensei, Jobless Reincarnation, season, uh, wait, Jobless See, Reincarnation, I think, second season? Is yeah. That supposed to be Jobless second? Reincarnation okay. 2, season previews, ending theme song. Jesus. In new trailer. The stage event at Anime Japan 2024 on Saturday for Mushoku Tensei, Jabba's Reincarnation 2, the second Mushoku Tensei anime season, revealed a new trailer video which pre previews the ending theme song, Mamori Taimono, What I Want to Protect, by female artist Yuiko Ohara. Ohara also performed live the theme song at the stage event. It was previously announced that Saya Azawa and Yuki Takara will join the cast as the older Norn Grey Rat and older Aisha Grey Rat, respectively. The reason will return, or no, the season will return on April 7th at 24 uh, midnight, effectively April 8th at midnight, or April 7th at 11 Eastern Daylight Time. On the Tokyo MX, KBS Kyoto, and BS11 channels, it will air on the Sun TV channel. The season will air for two cores, two quarters of, the, of a year. The first half premiered on Tokyo MX on July 2nd, 2023, before airing on the uh, other networks. And the second half will air from April to June, 2024. Crunchyroll is streaming the season as it airs. The season will have a total of 25 episodes. And the rest of that's just, you know, background stuff.
So, my favorite thing about this this uh, trailer announcement is that they revealed that yes, Reedard will be showing back up again. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> The winner of Best Damn Babysitter will return. Fuck yeah, he was. <laughs> it was yeah. like, he didn't just babysit. He taught Eris to be strong, bro. That's great. Like, he he did the damn thing. Got them all the way from the Bigoya region of the Demon Continent back to essentially Rudy's home. Rudy and Eris' home. So, yes, very much looking forward to this. This is coming out April 8th, so just a little over uh, two weeks away. But uh, mark your calendars, guys, because the 6th, 7th, and 8th, that's literally two Sundays from now. Right? No, that's Monday. It's coming out on Monday, right? Six, yes, yeah, that's seven, a Monday. Eight. That's a Monday. So we get, slime, days. we get slime on Friday and Mishoku Tensei on Monday. <laughs> Mishoku Tensei Mondays. Yeah, awesome. Oh, we're so doing it. Dude, we could do we could do watch alongs on Mondays. That'd be fun. Yeah. yeah. And we could do both. Uh, the episode of uh, Slime and the episode of Mishaki Tensei. Well, here's the funny thing. Here's the really funny thing, right? Um We may end up before the second half, before this season actually ends, being done with slime. So we may end up watching Mashoku Tensei Mondays only to start reading Mashoku Tensei Mondays. So it's possible. Funny. I'd love it if we could pull that off. That'd be great. Uh, but that having been said, yes, guys, we will. Uh, once we get done with volume 16 of Slime, we will be pausing there to let the uh, light novels get further ahead. And uh, we're going to read because we don't have to wait on stuff to get further ahead from Mishoku Tensei because all 26 volumes have been released. Rudy's story in Mishoku Tensei. I need to clarify Rudy's story in Mishoku Tensei has been fully finished. Uh, There are uh, spinoff stories that actually deal with his kids that uh, that are going to get translated at some point. But that having been said. Uh, yeah, uh, it'd be really, really cool because we'd be starting at volume one of Mashoku Tensei. So we go all the way to the beginning. Meanwhile, the anime is like on volume 12, you know, by the time we'd probably get started. So that'd be pretty cool. I'm looking forward to it. That was great. And I really enjoyed this teaser. Uh, the song was really, really nice. Like, heartwarming i honestly was not paying attention to the song at all and it had everything to do with i'm like i know the story coming up i want to know if they're going to talk about this specific thing or that specific thing because honestly they showed stuff they shouldn't have shown in the first trailer like holy shit y'all are showing that okay that's massive important stuff i mean if you don't know what's going on yeah it's not spoiler but if you know what's going on you're like that's massive spoiler why are you showing that and then, uh, yeah, yeah, they seem to be there. I mean, I understand it's how it went. The light novels too. They're focusing a lot on the relationship between Rudy and Sylphie. Uh, if you don't know what's going on and you haven't seen the first half of season two of Mishoku Tensei, hurry up and fix that. Uh, there was, oh my God. The other thing that I really love is the PTSD that, uh, Rudy has especially when he sees Nanahoshi or Silent Seven Star, how he just fucking breaks down and starts like turning mm-hmm. into a blubbering, screaming mess. It's really good. So well done on the acting for Mashoku Tensei as well. Uh, yeah, I that's all I got to say about that. I'm really looking forward to this. Another great Isekai series coming out. <laughs> but um, there's a lot of good stuff to be watching in the spring lineup and we're actually starting to get some summer announcements too. So yeah. Uh, and that one in the vein of that Fenris, why don't you tell us about our next one? Demon Lord 2099 anime reveals fall debut, more cast and staff in teaser video. 
a stage presentation for the anime of author Daigo Muras Murasaka and illustrator Kureta Demon Lord 2099, light novel series at Anime Japan 2024 on Saturday, revealed that the anime will debut this fall, as well as more cast, more staff, and a teaser, pro teaser promo video. Rio Ando, director, episode director for 86, series director for Double Decker, Dogging Kirill, is directing the anime at JC staff. Yurichiro Momose, so I'm a spider, so what? The Witch of the Beast. God damn, that spider name, spider anime name is still fucking killing me. Is uh, both writing and overseeing the series scripts. Uh, Ryosuke Tanagawa, chief animation director for One Punch Man, season two, is designing the characters. Jin Akatagawa is the sound director, and Tatsuya Kato is composing the music. The anime stars Satoshi Hino as Demon Lord Veltol and Miko Ito as Mashina. Or Maki Makina. Makina. Yeah, I'm saying Makina. Makina, yes. <laughs> My first thought went to Machinima. I <laughs> want to do some Machinima for Fat Dog. I really do. God damn it. Cause, like, you could pull it off with Helldivers so easily. We could, yes. So easy to do. Uh, Yen Press is releasing the novels in English, and it describes the story. Fused era year 2099, Shinjuku. The dazzling prosperity of this massive city-state conceals a lurid darkness just beneath its surface. It is here, in this megapolis... Megalop... Megalopolis. Megalopolis. Fuck you, American English. Why are you such a weird language? <laughs> that represents the pinnacle of human development where the legendary demon lord Veltol makes his second coming. To rule this brave new world, he will have to take hold of the future for himself. Mm. Kiryo Akashi Akashiro is drawing a manga ad adaptation of the novels on Katakawa's Shonen Ace Plus website. All right. I have not watched the this teaser. I just was like, Demon Lord 2099. Okay. The teaser really didn't show much. It didn't? No. Not not really. Hmm. Well, in that case, let's move on. Because I don't really have thoughts or opinions on this. I, it was the one story that I forgot to look at the trailer for. But the next one I sure did, and I was a little mad because the first half of it isn't even a trailer. It's just people talking. Moon Moon. You're, you're covering this story because you just got done with the actual anime, so it's still fresh in your head. Tell us more. Mm -hmm. Tell us a bit more about the newly announced new title. It's not simply season two. It is, oh goodness, Return of the Prince. Yes, yes. Uh. Yeah. Yeah, I was trying to find the title you were talking about because it's like, uh, I thought it was in the uh, actual title. So it's not there. Tower of but, God. Uh, Return Tower of the Gods. Prince. Yep. Yeah. Tower of God Season 2's sneak peek video reveals Nizu Song's revamped staff. More cast. Crunchyroll revealed a sneak peek uh, promotional video for the Tower of God anime's second season on Saturday. The video reveals that Nizu will perform the season's opening and ending theme songs and it announces the revamped main staff and more cast members for the second season the newly announced cast members are yu shimamura as kana uh or yio go uh saki miyashita as mana yio miseng kinichiro matsuda as kosuke or kang horyang uh kinto shiraishi as hon arc raptor Kingo Kawanishi as Prince, Netsuko Abe as Nia, Naoki Iri, uh, Irie as Rai, and Nib uh, Nobuhiko Okamoto as Kun Aguero Agnes. <laughs> Kazuyoshi Tekeuchi, armored trooper uh, of armored trooper Votoms alone again, is serving as chief director for the new season. It's... And Akira Suzuki is replacing Takashi Sano as the director at the Answer Studio Company Limited. Remember Instead that the of E's telecom in animation Japanese film. sound like A. Like the, like A, so Takeuchi. Just, just a reminder, it's uh, 
Yeah, the E's in Jap in Japanese sound like the I, letter A. It's all good. Yeah, it's I'm having to. Yeah, anyways, yeah. you're having to jump uh, between languages. I get you. Yeah, because having to go back and forth between Japanese names and Korean names. Yeah, that hurt. throws <laughs> that throws stuff off. I like the new poster though. That looks awesome. It does. Mm -hmm. Uh, Eriko Yoshida of Bochi the Rock okay, here's is the thing. back in charge. We don't actually have to list off all the staff. Uh, let's talk a little okay. bit about... Uh, all right. So the second season will debut in July. Crunchyroll will stream it in North America, Central America, South America, Europe, Africa, Oceania, the Middle East, and CIS territories. Those damn separatists. Now, hmm. what? let's talk about the trailer. Because trailer dropped yes we have like the big half of the trailer announcement being like the the group talking and i'm just like okay and then they don't even show the music <laughs> yeah so it's like why yeah. why but then we get to the actual trailer so let's talk about the actual trailer guys what'd you think i am as somebody who I'm excited. Yeah. read most of the webtoon mm -hmm. up to like six months ago, I yeah, need yeah. to re-catch up on everything. Oh boy, <laughs> you've got a lot to catch up on. <laughs> oh, I know. Low I po by. That's all I'm going to say. Low po by. It, I am so looking forward to this. Yep. I, I am too. Though I was a little disappointed. I was expecting to see some awesome shit happening and all I got was a trailer full of turtles. I mean, yeah. Long hair black turtle. Long hair black turtle, man. All right, so. Where uh, is the blue turtle? Yeah, where's the blue turtle? Uh, so that's my question, guys. How much are you guys looking forward to arguably the best manhwa to have come out of the Webtoon franchise that they have done with. Uh, uh, with Crunchyroll. Uh, it's the only one that actually survived the three that got released. Yeah, there was no Bleas, which I think that one actually finished in the anime format. Yeah, and then there was uh, High School. Uh, God of, God high, of high, school, high School, which yeah. which started out strong and then just kind of it just tapered noped. off. It just it just noped, and it's like, yeah, th this anime didn't do a good job of like really reimagining the manhwa. So, but. Uh... Tower of God's looking amazing, especially because oh, they yeah. show us a bit of Bon being super powered. Uh, uh, so. Spoilers, Juvola dude. Spoilers. Juvola Grace. Yeah. And it's it's not N, it's M. Bomb. Bomb. He's the twenty fifth yeah. of them. Yeah, he's the twenty fifth bomb. Anyway. Mm. <laughs> there were clones. So many clones. Uh, but yeah, that having been said, we are now officially done with that group of trailers and can move on to the next somebody, but anybody, but me, please talk about the next one. Cause I fucking moon. hate this show. Moon. <laughs> moon. Uh, you volunteered. I, I hate this show too. So moon. Uh, do we have to do this one? <laughs> I mean, we, oh, just think we about, all hate here's this the thing. One. We don't actually have to go through the whole thing. We can just be like, all right, guys, another thing that was announced at Anime Japan 2024, season three of ReZero. I saw people celebrating this. Whatever. I don't mm. care. I no, no, my thoughts there were, uh, are if so anyone cares, ReZero season three for everyone else, let's move on. Here's my thing. Here's my thing. So many people were like, no, dude, you got to watch season two. And I'm like, dude, if it takes a whole second season for me to stop hating the main character. No, no. I watched all of season one and I could not stand him. Fucking hate Subaru. I'm not going to continue to watch a show where the main character is someone I loathe. All right. Since you passed it off, it's now your time. Fenris. You're, you're gonna, I mean, Oh, all right. We could just be like, Hey, these are all things that got announced, but you know, I figured we should at least talk about it. Mike, like, I, I'll, I'll talk. I would gladly kind of talk about the next one just because it looks a little interesting. Oh, I, I think we, we all want to talk about the next Absolutely. one. Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, uh, as for the elusive samurai, I uh, just quick. I've read. I read a good chunk of the manga. 
uh, for a while, and then I just stopped and haven't gotten back into it. But uh, oh. I enjoyed Elusive what I read. Samurai reveals first short promo video in July premiere. Uh, Viz Media is also releasing the manga in print, and the company describes the first volume as, After the massacre of his family by the traitor Ashikaga Takeuji, Toki Yuki flees with the help of a handful of loyal retainers who have also survived the purge. One of them is Suwa Yoroshige, an ally of the Hojo clan and lord of Suwa province. The slightly odd Yoroshige also claims to be a clairvoyant and foretells that Toki Yuki will one day become the ruler of Japan. But for the moment, escaping from an enemy territory is the priority. Yeah. Sounds it's... okay. So, okay. You're like, it sounds okay. And I'm like, no, no, no. If you read this portion of the manga, you would absolutely understand what's going on here. This is very much historical. This is kind of, well, I don't, it's as historical as like, say, a Roroni Kenshin would be. Like, it's of that historical variety, but at the same time, it's like, you know, this is absolutely fictional. So it's, it's fictional history. You know, it's not revisionist history. It's just fictional history. Wait, why are you talking about American history? X. Uh, so. Yeah, uh, I, uh, I, I enjoy this manga. I'm looking forward to the anime because it was kind of fun and silly and lighthearted. And, but also, goddamn, when there's fighting, it's... It's old school samurai fighting and like, yeah, I wonder if the anime is going to do what the manga did, because if they do, this is going to be bloody when it comes to the fighting, dude. Because they do not hold back from war and decapitations in this manga. Decapitation! <laughs> Moon Moon, would you like to talk about the next one? Yes, please. <clears throat> Plus sized elf anime reveals July debut. New Woo-hoo! visual. It is a very nice poster. Uh, yeah, very Plus nice. sized elf is very good. Mm-hmm. A stage presentation at the Anime Japan 2024 event on Sunday for the anime of uh, Sinekdoch's. However, you pronounce that. Plus size elf. Uh, elf Sanwa. You Japanese. don't have to read the uh, manga revealed. Yeah. Manga revealed that the anime will debut in July. The event also revealed a new visual. Mm-hmm. The anime stars Ayase Ito as Elfuda, uh, Takehira Ishii as Tomoatsu uh, Naoe. Okay, again, you don't have to read the cast, and you can skip to just the description of the story. The summary okay. of the story. Yeah. Uh, now Kun, uh, a massage therapist, is about to head home for the day when he's saddled with a rather strange patient. The lovely lady has emerald eyes, pointy ears, and grew up in the forest. Everything about her screams elf, except for one thing, her bodacious body. It turns out she left her world but loves junk food in this one. Now her obsession has caught up with her. Can Naoi-kun uh, help this lovable elf girl lose the weight and keep it off? Yep, that's basically it. It's like, bruh, this is the this is the show to read if you want to diet, but also it's not the show to read if you're on a diet. This sounds like a like a gut wrenching rom com. Yes, and I am all here for it. So good. Um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to this. All right. Again, one of those series where I've read the manga and I'm kind of biased, so I shouldn't talk about this. Uh, I'm just happy and excited to hear that it's getting a season two coming in October. Fenris, please tell us more about this one. Ron Kamenahashi's Forbidden Deductions anime's second season premieres in October. Uh, manga Plus is released in the manga digitally in English, and it describes the story as the unusual duo brings the hidden truth into the light. Ron Kamenahashi, a private investigator with serious, uh, serious issues, and Totomaru Ishiki, a pure-hearted but dim police detective, team up to solve the most baffling mysteries. A thrilling detective story for a new generation from Akira Amano, creator of Reborn and Eldai. Yeah, uh, when they said it was the mangaka who did Kaitekyo Hitman Reborn, I was 100% on this. And it's a pretty interesting detective saga, 
And I like how this dude just solves the crimes, but also the consequence he has when he solves crimes. Once he deduces who the culprit is, he forces them to try and kill themselves. Yes. That's why it's that is why he is forbidden from doing detective work. That's why it's forbidden deductions. Because literally when he finds out who the killer is, he will literally command them to kill themselves and they will do it as if they are hypnotized. I can't tell you any bit any more about that, but that's the hook. That is literally the hook right there. I'm and sorry. Then, I, I just read Arb Knight's comment. What? The biggest loser, Isekai edition. <laughs> uh, the plus size elf. Yeah, that's good. All right. Next up. The one we've all been waiting for. The one none of us initially thought was going to be a good show. Right? Yeah, but then but then we watched the first episode and had to eat some crow. Uh, and, then, oh, yeah. and we all just started reading the fucking manga for it. We after all that. started huh? reading the manga yep. and rooting for this project. Moon, why don't you tell us what we're talking about, man? Oshinoko's anime or anime's second season reveals July debut. More cast in video. A stage presentation at Anime Japan 2024 on Sunday revealed that the second Oshinoko anime season will premiere in July. The below video for the second season also reveals more cast. The video previews the cast of the in-work 2.5 stage play Tokyo Blade. In the story, the play is an adaptation of a manga. All right, the event there. also revealed a new teaser visual. All right, we'll we'll stop there. All right, so since all three of us know what this upcoming arc is about and how we're about to get some really juicy and interesting information revealed about uh, Aqua and the rest of the cast, it's funny, they're like, the new cast members, you mean like three of them? Because everybody that's mm -hmm. coming out, coming back in season one, even a character you didn't think you'd see again is back. Uh, but yeah, it's so good. It's so god damn good. <laughs> Man. It's so dark and I love every yeah. second of it. Uh, if you don't know what a 2.5 stage play is, don't worry. They will explain it to you in the series. Uh, I mm -hmm. didn't know either. We got it explained to us. It's a whole different thing. It's so it's so interesting. Uh, guys, what are you thinking? Look, moving forward into this next uh, this next arc of the series. I yeah. I'm going to need alcohol while watching it. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. <laughs> there is definitely some darkness going on in here. And like the more we start it, to delve and into not the Aqua, darkness that we all enjoy from Kono Stupa. Yeah. The, the more say. we start to delve into uh, Aqua and some of the, some of the hidden facets of him, all the more interesting this becomes. Mm. I am not sure how far into this I am. I know I am into this arc, um, but the, I think the last thing I read was the writer of the original thing came in and started bashing the writer of the Okay, play. okay. Don't say anything more because that's spoiler. Mm. Yes, Brendan. Also not the Aqua from Konosuba. Also not the Aqua from Konosuba. Yes, indeed. Yeah, this uh, Aqua is actually useful. You need can do to, things yes, on his own. Very, <laughs> very, keep, very useful. You need to keep reading, buddy, because holy shit, there's a lot more that happens. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like... Like major announcements, fi uh, reveals that we've been waiting fucking forever for the aftermath of said reveal, which is like, oh god, no. But yeah. So yeah, there's a lot more that's going on here. Plus, you get to meet Death. Mm -hmm. That's an actual thing in this series. It's fucking okay. great. Yeah, I won't say anything more. Just know that, god damn it, it gets good. Yes. All yes, right. It does. The further into this series you go, the more it starts to, the more the series starts to feel like the, that first episode. All right. Now it's time, Fenris. You have the Gundam block. Let's talk. I thought about we were it. going to talk about solo leveling after all the trailers. Oh, that's right. We are talking about solo leveling. That's right. Thank you for reminding me. You are quite welcome. Yep. Yep. All right, guys. Episode eleven of Solo Leveling came out. It is the best episode of solo leveling yet. 
there was definitely a lot more going on in the anime than there was in the manga as far as this oh, fight. Yeah. Uh, I'm not happy about some parts of the episode where they kept cutting away from the this very important fight. It's like, guys, we're in the dungeon. Let's stick in the dungeon. Why are we cutting back to these... Also, my other question is, why are they going to Jeju Island right now? That makes no sense in the context and story of what was going on in the light novel and the manhwa. So, yeah, mm -hmm. there's that. Uh, and, like, I get, I get doing the dinner, but cutting back and forth all the time, that was, that was unnecessary padding that you could have just done. You could have done that as one whole complete scene. That whole thing was one complete scene instead of cutting back and forth. Because that's just a dick move. I mean, if they're going to cut between scenes uh, in this episode, they should have done it between the dinner scene and all the S-Class hunters. Mm -hmm. Now, that being the case, uh, the majority of this episode was, in fact, exactly what I thought it was going to be. It was going to be the first half of the instance dungeon, the whole fight with Igris. Which, by the way, uh, Ignis. That's fight, dude. That's Holy so good. shit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is, this is definitely one of those cases where the anime surpasses the manhwa. And the, it, it, here's the thing. The art was fucking phenomenal. And I loved watching people react to this episode. Because when they do the POV from Jin Woo, and here comes Ignis just right there. Holy shit! The amount of people... Like, I love watching these reactions because I like seeing the one guy who knows because he's read the manhwa sitting there with his friends that have no idea what's coming up. And they're like, they're like, yeah, you don't understand. After this, that's when we finally meet Jin Wu. And they were like, wait, what? And they're like, yeah, you yeah. haven't seen shit. This is nothing. What's coming? Way better. And I'm like, yeah. By the way, the next episode is called Arise, which I absolutely called. Knew that was going to happen. 100% knew this was going to be the ending. Uh, but yeah, this is good. This is the, the fight choreography. This just, episode was fucking insane. The, uh, the anime definitely did the fight so much better. Yeah. I actually made it feel like Jin Woo was going to get his ass handed to him worse than he did. And that he was actually going to lose. Here's, here's the thing guys. So far, we've just been seeing really, really cool ways that Jin Wu kills things or kicks everyone's ass. This is the first, like, real fight you get in the series. Like, it's a hard fight. Like, it's not one-sided. Now, don't get me wrong. There are still plenty, plenty of times where Jin Wu will be, on, be in a one-sided battle. It's not even a fucking contest. Uh, you will feel bad for whoever Jin Woo's up against. Well, sometimes. Other times you won't. And then there are going to be moments where there's real fights where Jin Woo has to push himself and you're just like, those are the ones that get you on the edge of your seat. So welcome to the first one. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to the first one. Moon, what did you think? Damn good episode. Um... <laughs> Yeah, the the cutting back and forth was very annoying though. Um, I, I agree yeah. on that one. I was pretty uh, sure that wasn't just a me thing. Yeah, no. The fight, however, was amazing. The choreography, just the animation, and it was fun seeing uh, uh, something just humanoid. That was kind of on par, like on level with uh, uh, no, kind of better than Jin Woo. Yeah much better keep in um, mind guys however, at this point Jin Wu is only level 40 mm -hmm. yeah I think he went up several levels by beating Egress. yeah he did he did he went up several levels and also like we're Kurt, still Kurt not like, gonna come to the demon he does the thing and then there's just bing, 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 bing. Like, we're still not coming to wrong, the demon Richie. dungeon anytime soon either what uh, correct me if I'm wrong but in the manhwa doesn't Igris talk to um Jin Wu at least once during the fight? No. Or before the fight? No. He's silent the entire time. He doesn't okay. have a voice until later. Okay. If... One thing I gotta say is, uh, what does uh, Jin Wu have against eyes? Three times now, I think? He's gone for the eye? 
I mean, it's an easy way to cripple your enemy. It is. Mm -hmm. It is very good. But yeah, this is the best uh, fight animated episode to date. And they even incorporated some more, like, music stuff in there. Like, not not to the degree that they did with episode six, obviously. Mm. But, like, the way that they incorporated the music. And my favorite thing was watching people when uh, Igris just, like, okay, drops the sword, drops the cape, drops the daggers. And he's like, oh, you want to do fist fisticuffs? Let's box. And they're like, yeah. oh, oh, shit. And, like, so many of them were just like, oh, shit. And then he just starts beating them out of him like mm. he beat him like he owed him money <laughs> and jinmu straight up said it correctly he goes dude the only reason i won was based on luck like i got very lucky Fuck well, yeah he did yeah, he did all right now that having been said it is time for us to move on to the gundam block please fenris take it away so talked about this uh, i think it was last week or the week before but mobile suit gundam silver Va phantom vr anime reveals trailer video new visual and main staff uh looks like the trailer finally got released outside of japan uh, bandai namco filmworks and virtual reality production company atlas v revealed an exclusive trailer new key art visual and the main staff for the mobile suit gundam silver phantom feature length vr anime for metaquest on thursday the trailer reveals the story is set in the universal century 0096 which is 17 years after the events of the original gundam anime now that's all staff don't care about reading all that shit again uh and then it's just basically stuff that we talked about uh before uh, it's all re reconfirming South by Southwest 2024 stuff, and the fact that it's going to be once again for the Meta Quest. But this time, they've uh, it's actually not going to be a movie. I know it is. Sorry, feature like VR anime. Yeah, it is going to be a movie. Fuck. I was hoping it's going to be a series. But. Up next is Gundam Seed and Dune Part 2 collaborate with new visual. I haven't seen Dune Part 2, so please cast your stones at me. I don't plan on watching it anytime soon. <laughs> I'm 100% going to be throwing my stones at you. Moon please has do. seen Same. Dune Part 2. Please do. I will, I will gladly take that pain. Dune Part 2 is fucking amazing. You need to go see it. It is. So worth it. We should watch. Well, yeah, the uh, the collaboration <laughs> visuals were Kira and I forget the other guy's name for the life of me. They don't even look familiar. Uh, standing side by side with the word "Siege Freedom" on it, it looks exactly like the Dune Part Two trailer or visual. I'm guessing that was the whole point. I don't know. I didn't really read this. I saw the article before. I'm just like. That's great. I don't. I don't have any interest in Dune right now. I'm just going to skip this. I see you, Richie, looking at me angrily. I'll watch it eventually. I always do. I, I just. I just want all three to be out so I can just binge watch the trilogy at once. Have you read the books? No. One of the few times that Moon has done something I haven't. Well, I, I haven't read the books either. But for my cousin and my friend who watched it with me who have both read the books, they got to sit there with the movie and they were like, oh, holy shit. Oh, this thing. Oh, that was this. And even with the first movie, there was a lot of things that they were like, oh, interesting. That I'm like, hmm, I didn't get that, but okay. So. That's why I asked, like, if you had read, read the books, you'd probably be interested in <laughs> yeah, I, I The only two movie I watched was the original from, like, I think the 80s or early 90s. A long, long time ago. In a much, much younger and more healthy body. And the last Gundam story. Gundam Requiem for Vengeance Animation's first trailer reveals fall debut. 
this was the other trailer we had mentioned earlier when we were talking about the Unreal Engine, because this entire anime is made in Unreal. And holy fuck, it looks good. We touched on this uh, on Requiem for Vengeance a couple months ago, and it showed one of the uh, RX-78s uh, looking fucking terrifying from the Xeon's point of view. But the Netflix stage event at Anime Japan 2024 on Saturday revealed the first trailer for the new animation project, Mobile Suit Gundam Requiem for Vengeance. The trailer's English version revealed its 2024 premiere, and the Japanese subtitled version of the trailer revealed that it will specifically premiere this fall. The six-episode, 30-minute Mobile Suit Gundam Requiem for Vengeance will stream exclusively worldwide on Netflix. The story focuses on the European front during the one-year war made famous by the first Gundam anime. The story centers on Iria Sorari, and the mecha include the Xeon Mobile Suit Zaku 2 and the Federation Mobile Suit Gundam. The first Gundam anime, which I am currently now watching on Netflix. Finally are you watching the... Are you watching the actual series or the recap movies? Mobile Suit Gundam 1 from 1981 with shit animation and everything. That That's the recap movies. Honestly, that's a better way to watch it because it cuts out all the filler you don't need to see. Oh, okay. I didn't think it's, that's... Uh, It should be a three-part... Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, two hours movie. and 19 first... minutes. Yeah, it's two hours yep. and 19 minutes. Okay. Yep, that's the recap. <laughs> okay. I mean, a lot it's... easier to, a lot easier to watch. Yeah. Saves time too. When is the whole char thing? Is that during this or is that after uh, this? Which which, which char thing? There's oh, like shit. six. There's six events with char. Mm-hmm. Okay, never mind. Okay. My introduction. Yeah. My introduction to Gundam was Gundam Wing. So. Honestly, the original Gundam. <laughs> was okay uh almost every other series that i've watched aside from turn of gundam were better iron blooded orphans has been my favorite gundam series so far it's I a damn good one don't get me wrong iron blooded or- i fucking love ido dude iron blooded orphans is fantastic don't get me wrong but i'll still always prefer the eighth <laughs> ms team Anyway, sorry. And it's okay. <laughs> that was the end of, um, almost the end. Uh, yeah, uh, looking the... at the trailer, this there, there's a lot more to this. Uh, and I, I don't know. The Gundam doesn't look as intimidating as it did in the first teaser. It looked way more intimidating that way. Oh. It was all because of how it was framed in the first teaser. But I but... also love the beam saber. How that looks. So good. Any anyway, it, I, the trailer itself just shows how chaotic the war was, and I once again I'm all here for it because huge Gundam nerd. Um, I actually had a well, what, how long was it, Richie? About half hour, forty five minute conversation with your brother on just the Gundam yes. models this morning. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, because <laughs> y'all were talking about putting a. Um... A couple of panels together. Yeah, a couple of panels together for Gundam stuff. Yeah, I still need to look into the actual blueprints for mobile suits. Still, <laughs> you get him talking about you get him talking about Gundams, and then my brother takes his phone downstairs to show off his like collection of Gunbla. Yep. Yeah. All right. But yeah that that was the Gundam block. There we go. That was actually much shorter than I thought it would be. Well, we are also reaching the two-hour mark, so I'm trying to paraphrase stuff and okay. not take us over too long. Oh, no, it's it's too late. We've still got uh, five, five stories left. Now we're moving to the general anime news block. So, starting off, we have the One Piece Music Symphony 25th Anniversary World Tour. Celebrate the 25th anniversary of One Piece with an orchestrated array of the famous anime's classic music. Relive One Piece's greatest moments as a live orchestra plays in perfect sync 
with the exciting action and heartfelt moments on screen. It's a magical way to commemorate the long life of adventure we've experienced alongside the Straw Hat crew. The Anniversary World Tour showcases highlights from Monkey D. Luffy's 25 years of swashbuckling action. Uh, let the giant screen fire up your imagination as you sail alongside the prospective Pirate King and his pals. Relive the hijinks on the high seas by listening to live versions of fan favorite songs like We Are, Sai Sai Sakyo, uh, Saikyo, uh, Otsu, Otsu Merareta, and Binks Sake. Keep an ear out for new pieces composed specific, uh, especially for the anniversary celebration, too. The One Piece 25th anniversary is scheduled to perform in cities worldwide in the United States. The concert will be performed at venues like Los Angeles Shrine Auditorium, San Francisco Davies Symphony Hall, and Dallas's Morton H. Meyerson Symphony Center. <sighs> Once again, guys, there's more than two states in America. It's not just California, no, no, Texas. They're, they've got California, Texas, <laughs> and Washington, D.C. Wonderful. Uh, Atlanta's more important than that. I'm just saying. You've got a bigger population yeah. of otaku and Probably Japanese Probably better people. venues, too. Yeah. All right. Tickets go on sale from March 22nd. Uh, they will start in Seoul, South Korea in June 1st. Los Angeles, July 26th. San Francisco, uh, July... Oh, I'm sorry. July 6th. Then San Francisco in July 8th. Dallas in July 10th. Washington, D.C., July 13th. Melbourne, Australia, July 19th. Or, sorry, July 13th for Washington, D.C. July 19th is Melbourne. Las Vegas, Nevada, July 20th. Brisbane, Australia for uh, Go Space Broncos. Uh, but uh, July 21st. Then the Sydney, uh, Sydney Australia uh, Harbor Theater. That's going to be neat. Uh, July 27th, Singapore, August 3rd. Uh, Coin, Germany, August 22nd. Berlin, Germany, uh, October 26th. Uh, Lyon, France, October 28th. London, in uh, November 16th. Paris, November 30th. And Lille, France, December 21st. Okay, so they've discovered Nevada, but it's like, bro, of all the big cities that everybody hears about, Atlanta is one of them. Also, Jesus Christ, people, Nashville is literally known as Music City. We have so many concert halls. Just saying. Anyway, yeah. I'm not going to be able to go see this. That's what's really sad. Yep, yep. Hmm. The, f the closest one to me is the Washington, D.C. area. Same. So, yeah. What a what a whole thing. And that place is a nightmare to drive around in. <sighs> okay. I mean, I knew I was going to get disappointed by this. But, hey, if you live in that area, please go see it. Tell us what it's like. Fenris, you have our next topic, and yes, I am choosing you because it's mech related. Yes, I know. Yep. I figured. Disney Plus to stream nearly all Macross anime worldwide in 2024. The official Macross website announced on Monday that the star brand on Disney Plus will stream numerous anime from the Macross franchise in 2024. Macross F character designer Risa Abada illustrated the visual below to commemorate the news. The confirmed titles include multiple editions of Macross Plus, Macross 7, Macross F, and Macross Delta. However, the Super Dimension Fortress Macross series from 1982 and its feature film remake, the Super Dimension Fortress Macross, Do You, Do you Remember Love, are both listed as limited distribution inside Japan. Hmm. According to the announcement, the Macross anime will be distributed on the platform by the end of 2024. The announcement also says that Disney Plus will be the only video distribution platform where all these titles will be available at once. 
The following titles are listed for distribution outside Japan. Holy shit, here we go. The Super Dimension Fortress Macross Flashback 2012, the music video derived from the television and film versions of the original Macross anime. The Super Dimension F Fortress Macross 2, Lovers Again, six episodes. Macross Plus, four episodes total. Macross Plus Movie Edition. Macross 7, 49 television episodes plus three OVA episodes. Macross 7, The Movie, The Galaxy Calling, the Galaxy's Calling Me. Macross, 7, uh, Macross Dynamite 7, 4 episodes. Macross Zero, 5 episodes. Macross Frontier, 25 episodes. Macross Frontier, The False Songstress. Macross Frontier, The Wings of Farewell. Geki Jio, Tanpan, Macross Frontier, Toki no Meiku. Macross FB7, Ore no Uta Okike. Macross Delta, 26 episodes. Macross Delta, The Movie, Passionate Walkire. Macross Delta, The Movie, Absolute Live. <clears throat> I got that on two breaths. I'm surprised. The latest animated work in the Macross franchise, the Geki Joban Macross Delta Sete Live feature film, opened in Japan in October 2021 alongside the Geki, Geki Jo Tanpan Macross Frontier Tokyo no Mikyu Macross Frontier. Why can't you just give me the fucking English name first? Macross Frontier Film Short Labyrinth of Time Film Short. Sunrise is launching a new Macross animation project. Big West Studio Nue and Harmony Gold USA announced in April 2021 that the companies agreed to allow the immediate distribution of most Macross television sequels and films globally. The companies agreed to cooperate on the distribution of future Macross and Robotech projects. Holy fuck, that's a lot of Macross that I'm going to have to rewatch. Yeah. Alright, next one up. Voice actors Natsuki Hane and Hiro Shimono talk about meeting fans on the Demon Slayer World Tour. Which, by the way, I didn't know that they were showing up and you could actually talk to the Japanese voice actors. I I would have gone just for that. Fuck alone. yeah. Yeah. Fuck yeah. See, so the, at least they're the, adding something of the quality theater, to the, going the, to the theater, producer. going to the theater and just watching a bunch of anime that I could watch on Crunchyroll, not worth it to me. But meeting the Japanese voices of two of these characters, uh, specifically Tanjiro and Zenitsu, 100% would have paid for that. And yeah. So they, uh, as part of the world tour, a series of special screenings held in 10 cities across 10 countries where members of the Japanese cast were flown to a special stage show and meet foreign fans. Hanai went to five of them. I started with New York, then went to Singapore, Jakarta, Paris, and London. <laughs> I cannot say the word Jakarta now without thinking of the live action adaptation of The Last of Us. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hanai often found himself encountering fans and was surprised by the fervor. As you may have guessed, even outside Japan, Demon Slayer is popular. Every fan is super pumped up about it. It was amazing. Uh, however, while Shimono only went to the New York event, it left a big impression on him. In between events, we, Hanai and me, went to meet and greet some of the fans. However, we were less popular than the costume mascots of our characters. Like, we were told, excuse me, I'm taking pictures of the mascots right now. Give me a minute. Yet, even this left Hanai with a deeper appreciation for foreign fans. Because of experiences like that, I feel that Demon Slayer itself is loved in many different ways. Be that the characters themselves or the voice actors like us. Yeah. Uh, if you see a, if you've seen the picture of like the little mascots of the mascot guys that they have there, yeah, you absolutely want a picture with that. Yeah, yes. yeah, yes, you do. Yes, you do. That's just great. Okay, guys, uh, this is going to be very, very quick. Uh, the update is the official Twitter account also posted the announcement in English, but basically, uh, the One Piece manga is going to take a three week break in April. Uh, Ichiro Oda will put his One Piece manga on hiatus for three weeks, uh, starting with the 18th issue of Weekly Shonen Jump that will release on April 1st. The manga will then return in the magazine's 21st issue on April 22nd. The manga will still appear on the 17th issue of the magazine coming out next Monday. <laughs> Basically, 
He's taking three weeks for himself, and I don't blame him. No, not at all. Yeah, this is coming on. Uh, this is coming on the heels of the news about Toriyama Sensei. Yes, this could cause some unnecessary excessive panic, but I am not unwell. And while it does have to do with my body, consider this a type of scheduled maintenance rather than anything else. Oda, get your rest. You've been doing this uh, for 25 years. It's okay to step away for a few weeks to get your shit together. Don't forget the last <laughs> sentence he uh, stated. Uh, uh, it's about time I start figuring out what the One Piece actually is. <laughs> <laughs> Sure. <laughs> More importantly, I think it's about time I start figuring out what the One Piece actually is. That's going to keep me quite busy. I'll have you know. Sounds severe, but n- no big deal. No big What's deal. that you say? You don't know the relationships are. Uh, you don't know the relationships and connections of all these characters popping up in the Egghead arc. Well, these folks—they're doing an all-you-can-read campaign for totally free on Jump Plus and Zebrak from April 1st through April 21st. So check it out. Yeah, guys, guys, Oimo and Kaishi are back. Ah! If you don't know who that is, Little Garden. That's all I can say. Little Garden. Pretty, pretty cool. Uh, But yeah, lots of characters in the past are showing up and lots of characters that we're uh, slowly getting more acquainted with. Oh my God, Kuma-san. Ah, oh, the backstory for Kuma. Heartbreaking. Really, really heartbreaking. Love it. Oda, you fucking genius. You keep writing everything down that you can. It's just beautiful. Uh, but yeah, he's taking a break, and some of it has to do with Toriyama Sensei passing. <sighs> Speaking of which, that leads us into our next one. Dragon Ball Super Manga goes on indefinite hiatus. The May issue of Shonen's, uh, Shueisha's V-Jump magazine announced on Thursday that Toyotoro's Dragon Ball Super manga will go on hiatus starting in the magazine's next issue, which will release in April. The magazine did not reveal when the manga will resume serialization. The manga previously took a break to prepare for the next arc in August 2022 and resume serialization in December 2022. The manga started its superhero arc, the adaptation of the Dragon Ball Super superhero film, in March 2023. Toyotaro launched the manga in V Jump in June 2015 as an adaptation of the Dragon Ball Super anime. Though the manga diverges from the anime in several ways, Shueisha will publish the manga's 23rd volume on April 4th. Uh, uh, and then it's just basic information about Toriyama, which we've kind of already covered uh, for several weeks considering his passing and whatnot. So that is all of the news that we have. And we managed to get that done in just a little over two hours. Um, yeah. <clears throat> not surprising that Oda's taking a break and also not surprising that uh, there's an indefinite hiatus for Dragon Ball Super, given the recent news that came out about Toriyama Sensei. So uh guys thank you so much this has been a good time this has been anime church uh the church where uh cosplay is always welcome you know what i like that better cosplay is always welcome that's a much easier one to remember god yes. knows I'll yes, forget it is. It god knows i'll forget it next week let's be honest uh, and then we could just go back to well thank you for coming uh, welcome to anime church we fuck up yeah i mean well that was going to be a thing in general Anyway, guys, thank you so much for coming by Anime Church. We hope you uh, got some interesting information. And, of course, if you want to deep dive further into this, all links for the articles that we're reading, all of our sources are down in the description. So you can check out the trailers, the uh, news articles, all those different things that you want to look at and get your nerd on uh, is all available down below. And, of course, thank you guys so much for coming by. I'm Richie Roberts, your Minister of Science and Technology. I'm Moonlight Sparks, your Minister of Arceology. Praise Arceus. And I am Fenner Sarun, your patron saint of Snackos. And yes, Brandon, we are cosplaying our own things. <laughs> Take care, guys. Bye-bye for now. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>